Good morning. So I thought today I would talk to you about uh, C3R Magazine. This is issue number 28. <coughs> and uh, Roger sent me a copy to have a quick look at. So it doesn't have uh, the game components in it or uh, any of the counters. It does have all the extra sheets and bits and pieces. So what I thought I'd do is give you a quick overview of this and give you an opportunity to, you know, make an assessment of it, uh, of whether or not it's something that you would be interested in acquiring. It's a, once again, it's a full cover, a full cover, full color issue, uh, 63, 64 pages long. It's got a, the cover is actually different. This edition or feels different anyway. It's a, a th slightly thicker uh, cover paper and slightly glossier than usual. And it actually looks really nice. Uh, there's a tribute to John Hill. Uh, which uh, was written by Dana Lombardi, and uh, it's a very, very thoughtful, thoughtfully written article there. Uh, and some great uh, images inside the magazine, you can see those there, uh, to kind of uh, capture the theme of whatever's being discussed. Uh, there's a very interesting set of interviews that I had a chance to look at uh, last night. <coughs> Uh, Ted Rezia and Michael Resch met Michael last year at the Game On conference in 2014 and uh, it was an interesting chat to, to talk to. Uh, both uh, these designers have uh, and really discussing World War I titles specifically uh, given that you know uh, Rezia had won uh, several uh, uh, what do you call them uh, Charlies uh, for uh, his work in the World War I era. So really good, uh, interesting uh, approaches to game design and their philosophy on uh, gaming. I enjoyed that immensely. That's a fairly long article with uh, uh, still with a quite quite a few uh, nice photographs in it as well. Once again, so gameplay stuff, not just uh, artwork. There's a historical background for the Battle of Liege, which is an expansion uh, for the uh, for Resh's uh, title. Uh, and there'll be counters in the magazine for that as well. And this is another extensive uh, article as well, focusing on the action on 5th and 6th of August. There's an enemy coast ahead uh, modifications that you can uh, try out. That's written by Jerry White. And that was interesting as well. Don't own that game yet, but uh, 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 and not really something I'm particularly interested in, but uh, certainly focused. Uh, this is actually focused on a couple of specific uh Dam runs that need that had a particular type of construction methodology and needed a different approach, and so he's written some rules here and cre basically create a scenario for you that you can uh, you can run with. Uh, Great Battles of the American Revolution, Volume Eight discussion. A campaign rules for Combat Commander, and I know you've probably if you're a Combat Commander fan. Uh, which I would say I'm a, a player, not a fan. I, I really like the game, but I'm not. Uh, I'm not, you know, over the moon about it. I haven't played it 500 times and, and know all the percentages of every card drawn based on what's previously been played. Uh, and that's interesting. You know, we need to talk about that sometime about the dice and the, on the combat commander cards. Anyway, campaign rules and charts and uh, character, not character counters, but leader counters in the. Uh, expansion uh, for the expansion for this uh, so you're going to need to get c3i just to get that it, it would be worth it alone the price of entry will be worth it alone for that uh, you have different rank tables here uh, and you start out with uh, a certain number of alarm points uh, and a rank and then uh, you get net alarm points added to you or cowardice points and that then will determine what rank you would move up to if you move at all and of course, you need to survive to do that. So that uh, this looks really interesting. This is about a four, and there are medals that you can earn: uh, various Italian, French, Soviet, German, U.S. and Japanese medals. Pretty cool. There's an example of play in here of how that may work. Uh, tactical tips for unconditional surrender, which is a great article. I enjoyed reading that. I haven't played yet, but I'm hoping to play the case blue and get started on this unconditional surrender. Uh, the other thing that was uh, really cool, it seems like Mark, Mark Herman wrote a lot of the articles for this edition, 
So if you're interested in what Mark's got to say about uh, various topics, this is uh, uh, a, um, a well worth reading. He has this uh, uh, set of articles he's been writing about in Clio's corner, the, which is taken from the Greek mythology, one of the muses. Um, and here he talks about the, the different roles that you can take in a war game and how that evokes the, the storyline that might come out of a game and uh, also engages you in the game. And he looks at it from both, both the strategic down to the tactical level and uh, then makes some observations about that. And I won't spoil it for you what he says and what he thinks. It has to do with Dr. Zeus though. Uh, let's see. Interview with the Twilight Struggle guys. They've got a new game called uh, Imperial Struggles. I'm sure that will be awesome. And uh, another article by uh, Churchill, uh, oh, sorry, by Churchill, by Mark Herman uh, about Churchill. <clears throat> and uh, spends uh, quite a bit of time here talking about the game, how things might work out. Uh, and it's got some nice, uh, you've probably seen all seen the artwork for this game. It's a, it can be a three player title and I'd be really curious about how this will play, uh, from that really high grand strategy level. And we'll, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll watch on with fascination about how this progresses. I'm probably not going to get the P500 for it. I'll try and pick a copy up second hand. And we'll see what happens with, with that once I see some reviews from guys I know well enough to care about. Uh, a retrospective on the American Civil War at sea. Who is this written by? By Smitty, uh, Robert Smith. Uh, you know him from his own, his own uh, Facebook page and magazine. And uh, that is a very long article. It has lots of really interesting, uh, good stuff in it, including book recommendations. Uh, and there are designer notes in here for uh, Rebel Raiders as well by Mark McLaughlin. Another article by Herman for Bots in the Pacific, uh, talking about the AI that will be forthcoming in the second edition. Really very, very excited about that coming. It needs to come soon because I sold my copy after spending an enormous amount of time trying to get it and overpaying for it and selling it at a loss. I want my copy. So let's go, Mark. Let's get that thing printed, buddy. Uh, the bots uh, concept is uh, the solitaire system is strictly, it's a lift from the coin system. And I think uh, if there was one thing that I find fascinating about the coin system is the, uh, the very clever uh, solo mechanics they have there for uh, the card play that needs to happen. And so I think that's pretty cool. Uh, a, uh, a look at uh, Craig Taylor, uh, that's written by uh, Sam Shiki. And um, looking over his career, in fact, there's an interview with him that uh, he did back in, uh, when was this written? When did the interview happen? Let's just see here. It was his last interview from Fire Movement number 51. Is that correct? That's probably not correct. Anyway, I think you all know Craig Taylor. He's written some fantastic games. Firepower and Flattop being two that I have played quite, uh, have played. And uh, Wooden Ships and Iron Man, I played that a long, 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 long time ago. So there's a long article in there about that. Designer notes on the Case Blue game that's in the magazine. Uh, designer notes by Racia for uh, the World War One titles. Uh, glory's end when eagles fight and there's another uh, this is from the dual pack that they put out and uh, one of the advanced after combat uh, chaps gets a nice photograph uh, put in the magazine Lucas well done uh, and then there's an article on seeding uh, card driven games or deck seeding in card driven games I have not read this yet. Uh, I got real tired last night, didn't quite get to it. And uh, then there's a great Bells of History uh, article for the Hoplite module, uh, the first battle of Mantinea in 418 BC. 
Uh, the counter sheets have the counter sheet here. Just if you're curious, has got expansion counters: fifty-four for the Battle of Liege, twenty-nine Arata counters for the Dark Valley, uh, new counters for No Retreat, uh, North Africa, eleven new counters for Hoplite Scenario, four Arata counters, uh, enemy coast ahead counters, eighty counters for the Vassal uh, for the Vassal game for uh, Selvaster's uh, game that's in the magazine. A rider counter is only five, which is nice for unconditional surrender. Some new counters for Iron and Oak, and uh, new ships for uh, Serpents of the Sea. And oh, that's for uh, and they'll be from the Master and Commander film. Uh, that's cool. Uh, some reminder counters for the people, and nine personal leaders for the Combat Commander stuff. So, uh, and a, a nice uh, gamer profile here on Yannick. Uh, Solarek, who is uh, a Polish war gamer. Here he is, handsome young man. New gamers, I love it. Uh, we need more new gamers. Great edition. Talk to you soon.